Well, I mean, let's be real. I don't think a lot of people n not see this coming, but it's not official. Zach Calzada has entered the transfer portal and Texas A&M. They need a new quarterback. But the question is, do they need a new quarterback for the long term or for the short term? <laughs> You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, everybody, and welcome back into another episode of Locked On Aggies presented by the Locked On Podcast Network. Cole Thompson back here in the driver's seat talking all things Texas A&M. And today, why don't we go ahead and talk about the news? Zach Calzada officially enters the transfer portal. What does this mean for Texas A&M? And more importantly, what does this mean for the Gator Bowl? Plus, where are some schools I think that Zach Calzada could transfer to? And he actually would be pretty successful, if you ask myself. This episode of Locked on Aggies is brought to you by Sonos. Sonos is the official sponsor of ESPN's College Game Day. Check out Sonos.com to learn more information about their product. Thank you so much for making us listen every single day. You can check us out on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube.com. Yep, subscribe right down there below. Get in all the action. And, of course, check us out every single day at LockedOnPodcast.com. As always, my name is Cole Thompson. I am the host of the show, and I love public feedback. Anything you can do to make this a more quality-sounding podcast, Monday through Friday, Give me a follow, give me a shout out, and I will add it into the mix. Secondly, Locked on Aggies. Locked on Aggies is your number one source for all things 12th Man related content found here on LLP. You can subscribe on iTunes, listen on Spotify, and if you can't do any of that, listen live every single day at LockedOnPodcast.com. So, Texas A&M Zach Calzada, he is entering the transfer portal, and you know what? I get it. I do. So basically what this means is this was an audition. This was an opportunity for him to solidify himself as QB1 for 2022. Haynes King wins the starting job right out of the gate. Seems to be the guy moving forward. Then there was a report, you know, you know, then there was probably some dis discomfort and discussion. Do I want to stay here for the remainder of the season? Do I want to use a year of eligibility? And probably I think by week six, he maybe would have already entered the transfer portal. Instead, he waits it out because if he's named the starter in week two for the remainder of the year, because if Haynes breaks his leg or fractures his leg or whatever, it's a clean break. It's, it's clean. He has to go under go surgery. He's on crutches. He's on a scooter for a little bit. And this is Cal's out of shot. This is his one shot. He can go ahead and be back next season as a and starting quarterback, or he can go ahead and enter the transfer portal at the end of the year. But there are some highs. Probably the biggest high in AM history right now would be beating Alabama at home. Jimbo Fisher becoming the first Nick Saban assistant to beat the GOAT. In their own backyard, another first that's never happened in college station history. So to be able to have that happen, great, good deal. And he has a really good game. That is one of those games, like when you think of, um, you know, that movie, The Little Giants, you know, that little kid with glasses who scores that big game wing touchdown by bulldozing and trucking the little crap out of the other dude uh, to get that touchdown. It's like that, it's like that, but like times that by 60 minutes. Cause that was a game he had three touchdown passes, 285 yards gets the crap not kicked out of him. Kind of comes out of like the comes out of the medical tent like a boxer out of hell, trying to make sure that he lands the final blow and gets this win, gets this for you know him and his city and his you know and his organization. And then we go right back to seeing what we already saw: guy who was very inconsistent throwing the football, guy who had one speed. It was you know it was a seventy-five mile fastball, whether it be a five-yard slant route or a fifty-yard deep ball. Miscommunication with the receivers, lots of three and outs, very heavily relying on the run game. And I guarantee you that Jimbo Fisher said, look, we probably believe that you could come back and be competing for the starting. But a young kid named Connor Wangman coming in, we still have Eli Stowers on the roster. And probably the biggest thing, Haynes is back. And Haynes won the starting job. Haynes won the starting job outright. So when you add that to the mix, when you add that into the conversation, when you put that into context now, you sit there and you go, I don't like it. I don't agree with it. I've been the starter all year. I got you to an eight and four record. And 8-4 is not going to cut at AM. It's just, it, it's not. And that's not an insult to Calzada because technically Calzada did go 7-4 and because they were down until the closing 30 seconds against Colorado. Without that, uh, AM loses that game. They go to 7-5 and on the year and he goes to 6-6. Uh, and Yeah, I guess it would be. Um, I guess it would be 6-5 and five as, yeah, it'd be 6-5 and five as a starter. So he goes 6-5 and five as a starter. 
And without him and his heroics, he doesn't get that win. Now, on paper, Haynes gets the win because that's how you created. The starting quarterback always gets the win no matter what the outcome is. You can play one snap. You can play uh, 50 total. You can play all 500 snaps for all I care. But you get the win. He gets you now those amount of wins and probably thinks I'm good to be a starter again. And he is. But not Texas A&M. And then that's the harsh reality of it, is that when you have a young up-and-comer like Connor Wegman that you have no idea what he's going to be, when you have a young guy like Haynes King who still has now, I think it's still going to be four years of eligibility because if you basically medically redshirted him this year, that gives you more time. And eventually, you're probably going to see if he goes to you know the baseball path, great. Then never got to worry about it. Just be the backup at, at quarterback for now. Or even... Kane's King transfer. Like, it's just, it's just going to happen. That's just the case of it. So Calzada probably realized, I'm not going to be the starter next year, and I want to be able to play as much as possible. I want to be able to lead a team. I've graduated from the university, and I still have two years of eligibility left. That's, I think, the big key ticker here. He's got two years of eligibility left because of COVID-19. Just because you stay at a university does not mean you're not you lose that year of eligibility. You get that year still. So technically... He still has two more years where he could start somewhere else, which is really good. He can go ahead and get his graduate degree from another university, whatever you want to do. And he has an opportunity to be a two-year starter somewhere else, which I think could benefit him in the long haul. I just don't think it was good enough at Texas A&M. I just, you know, the entire time you can say, oh, Zach's doing fine, Zach's doing fine, but you never saw progression. You never saw any bit of growth or development. You just saw the same guy every single week. It was one night. It was like one night where the ghost of crap, I don't know. Um, I mean, give me a quarterback, like pick one random one. Like, like pick Steve Young from the 1980s at BYU comes out of nowhere. Pick uh, pick um, Joe Montana at Notre Dame in the 1970s. Just throw that in the conversation. Like here, where are you? For a night, and that was it, and that's how he beat Alabama. But at the end of the day, I don't think people in Aggie Land are really upset. It's not like what we're losing, we're losing Zach Calzada. He just was our starting quarterback. I think they're all like, You did your job, you got us to a bowl game, you kept us afloat. Thank you for beating Alabama. You will forever be enshrined here, and he will. I mean, honestly, it would not shock me if one day they build a statue of him. Like, it, like, if they would have won the national championship this year and he still would have transferred, I believe they would have built a statue of him, like, out, outside of outside of Kyle Field. Because if they would have beaten Alabama and they would have won a national title and they would have won the SEC championship, and that would have been enough. Like, that would have been enough for Aggie fans, in my opinion. But instead, he heads out. Now it's time to talk about where he goes next. And there's definitely going to be a lot of places that he is going to consider because, let's be real, he's a starting quarterback in college football. He's going to have some options. Do I think they're going to be amazing options? Probably not. But I do think that there are a couple of big schools and a few small schools that he could look at as well. BetOnline.ag has you covered this entire holiday season. Go get some extra moolah in your pocket to go spend on the kids, on the family, on the moms, and the dads, whoever you need to go to, and make it your number one spot for bet, bet, uh, sports betting action. Head on over to their brand new updated website, BetOnline.ag, and use the sign-up code today and bring in a uh, 50% welcome bonus with your very first deposit when you use the promo code Locked On L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, from NFL to NBA to MLB offseason predictions. Yep, you can throw that in there. NHL, UFC, boxing, and much, much more. Stop seeing the sidelines, get into the action now when you can go ahead and get all your remaining games in 2021. Get a little extra cash in your pocket and go ahead and make your bets today with betonline.h where the game starts. This episode of Locked on Aggies is also brought to you by Price Picks. All right, let me give you a heads up, guys. This is fantasy sports made easy at the college level. When it comes to college football, bowl season right around the corner. So why don't you go ahead and make the bets? You can make up to two to five players anywhere from mid-level to major programs. So Bryce Young in Alabama, Blake Bost, Eli Stowers, whoever's going to be starting a quarterback for Texas A&M in the Gator Bowl, and so much more. The picks are very easy to make. And when you use the promo code Locked On L O C K E D O N, that's Locked On, you will receive a 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit up to $100. Basically, you spend 20 bucks, you get 20 bucks. You spend 100 bucks, you get 100 bucks. Go make your picks. They're very easy. It's very fast. All you got to do is go use the app. You can go online to use it. You can use it on Google Play, from the iTunes Store, wherever you get your Apple needs, whatever is your phone, whatever is your database. 
Go ahead, sign up, make up to two to five picks. Withdrawals are quickly done, and you can bet on literally anything from any single stat line. So go ahead and get involved today with prize picks. Fantasy sports made easy. Locked on Aggies, presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. The ultimate college football playoff is here in 2021 with the ultimate college football playoff preview presented by Locked on Podcast. Thanks again for making this your first listen every single day. Local experts, betting odds, and draft analysts will be breaking down all major teams, all major games. So go ahead and check it out on the ultimate college playoff preview 2021 and that begins this upcoming friday this upcoming friday december 18th all right so let's talk about what uh let's talk about where zach calzada can go i'm gonna go with a big school first i'm gonna go with like this is the ultimate if you can get there go ahead and do it go ahead and find a way to get into that organization make your mark and call it a day and i do think that that would be still in the sec um i don't think it's gonna happen I don't see it happening, but I do think that if you want, you probably could see an upgrade and it would probably work. Um, I would go right now and call Auburn. Auburn needs a stable quarterback. Auburn needs somebody who can go ahead and pass the football with efficiency, somebody who has that deep ball accuracy, somebody who they can build a program around for the next few years, and it is closer to Georgia. Now, keep in mind that he is probably going to look to be closer to home. I would say if not closer to home, at least in the kind of similar aspect, I think that that would probably be key. He grew up in Georgia, uh, in Buford area, if I'm not mistaken. So he, you know, Auburn, we up, you know, everyone says it's West Georgia, like it's just West Georgia because it's not really a part of Alabama, even though it is. It's like right on the border. It would make sense. He'd be in a major program. Brian Harson now is probably looking for a quarterback. T.J. Finley, not sure what to make of him. Not sure what to make of his status. If he's going to be a part of the long term deal, what you can add out there. So I, when you look at Auburn, who is going to replace Bo Nix. They need a quarterback. They need someone, someone stable. And also, Mike Bobo has not Mike Bobo. My bad. Brian Harson has worked with quarterbacks such as these in the past. He has worked with more pocket passing awareness guys who are going to actually stand their ground, not really move a lot, and deliver strikes left and right. That's kind of his style of quarterback. That's always was his style at Boise State. He didn't really have a lot of zip and zap guys. A lot of guys who would stand in the pocket and deliver strike after strike after strike. And he worked with a guy like Kellen Moore, who I don't think that uh, Calzada reminds me of Kellen Moore. I do think it's a little closer. Like, I mean, it's a little bit more reasonable than what Bo Nix was in the sense of that. So Auburn, to me, would be the, like, big golden ticket. Now, what's a good consolation prize? I think any one of the ACC schools that could be looking for a quarterback. So that means um, Virginia Tech could be looking for one. I think that you could throw probably... Virginia in the conversation now with um, likes of uh, um, uh, uh, Tony Elliott there. I think Duke. I think Duke would be a really fun option for him because Duke probably needs to go ahead and upgrade its quarterback. And on top of that, they need to find somebody who can come in and know what Mike Duncan is looking for. And depending on who they bring in as the offense coordinator there, I mean, he could have already worked with him at Texas A&M because nine times out of ten, when you see one coach leave, it's because of their bringing the usual one or two staff members with them. So with the right people, if Mike Elko wants to go and say, I believe I can win with this kid, I believe I can have a successful first season with this kid, go ahead. Why not add him into the conversation? Um, I would probably throw in, let's see, who's a few other names like in the in the ACC that probably could use quarterback. Maybe Syracuse if you want to. Uh, North Carolina, if you really believe that you're going to lose out on Sam Howell. I don't know what Sam Howell's status is, if he's going to come back for another year or not. So that would be really interesting. But those are probably my next year. More so, I would say, probably like actual possibility. Uh, I would go number one, Memphis. Memphis is a school that's in the AAC. They need to upgrade a quarterback. They did. They had a lot of struggles this year. They had a lot of inconsistencies. I could see him going to Memphis, working with um, I think it's Scott Silverward is is the uh, head coach's name. He's an he was the offense coordinator underneath uh, Mike. Uh, he was the defense coordinator underneath Mike Norvell. No offense coordinator. He was the offense coordinator underneath Mike Norvell, who helped them get to an AAC championship in back Cotton Bowl in that 2019 season. So I think with a guy like that uh, adding you in, you probably can have kind of, I would say, like a Tanner Mordecai successful start. Maybe you don't throw like 59 touchdowns like Mordecai did or whatever it was, 
but you can at least play more consistent. And the level of competition, I think, is more to your speed. So when you have that, where you play more of your level of competition, it actually makes you look like a better quarterback. It actually makes you look like a more sound player. It actually makes you look like you're more competent in that certain aspect. So those are things that I do look at. Those are things that I do consider as probably selling points. Another one, uh, Georgia Southern. Now, if you really want to go to a smaller school and just become like an absolute king there, Clay Helton is probably going to be looking for his own staff. Like Clay Helton, the new head coach, former USC head coach, is going to not allow any of those players who are on staff to be guaranteed a roster spot if they're not good enough. So if you don't like that situation, which you know I, I, nobody really did, if you don't like that situation, then why not go ahead and go to a team that allows you to, you know, is looking for a quarterback? And it's close to home. Georgia Southern, I think it's in Savannah, if I'm not mistaken, right down the road from Buford, Georgia. So to be able to be having your family, you're back in your home state, and to be able to probably just come in, be QB1 right away, that would make a ton of sense to me. I definitely think you can see a little bit of Sam Darnold in his overall game. Uh, you know, a lot of inconsistencies, but a lot of upside to his throws, a lot of intangibles that, you know, I, I think that Clay Helton would be able to work with a lot. So Georgia Southern would probably be on my radar. And then some lesser schools that I do think that would really work. Marshall, I think, could be interesting for him, you know, for him to be able to work in that type of level. That'd be really fun. I think also if you would see like maybe a school like um like Coastal Carolina, if they lose Grayson McCall, would Jamie Chadwell be wanting to give him a would be giving him a phone call? Maybe bring him in. Some other smaller schools. Troy could be interested in a new quarterback. They just got a brand new head coach. Uh, I'm blanking on his name right now. He was the Kentucky. Uh, it, it's John something, but he was the Kentucky uh, Kentucky defensive co defense coordinator. That could be real. John Summerall. That could be really interesting. I think South Alabama could be very interesting. The Jaguars, they're going to need to be replacing Jake Bentley. Uh, I think that you could go maybe a little bit further west, like a New Mexico or a New Mexico State. New Mexico, you know, Terry Wilson's done. Maybe you go out there. But if you really want to go small, small school and dominate the conference, there's a school literally right up the road that I think that he would actually really work well in. And that is Sam Houston State. Casey Keeler is going to have to replace his quarterback in Eric uh, Schmidt who is done, just won a national championship. They lost in the semifinals to go back to Frisco for the first time for back back seasons against Montana State, I want to say. So they're going to need a brand new quarterback. They're going to need somebody to come in. And in two years, they will make the jump from the FCS to Conference USA. So not only would you be able to build a system along with Casey Keeler that would be really, really interesting, you really wouldn't have to move that far from your friends and you know from your friends who live in College Station. It's only like a forty-minute drive from Huntsville to College Station. So, bada bing, bada boom. There you go. And then on top of all of that, you add in the fact that you definitely would be able to, in my opinion, you dominate that conference. Like you absolutely would dominate every little bit of that player. Maybe even when you have a national championship as an FCS player. And, and keep in mind that NFL scouts do look at that because of Trey Lance. Remember him. Uh, he went, what, number three overall, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, he went number three to the San Francisco 49ers. Maybe go that path, go to the FCS, put up a ton of statistics, a ton of numbers. People look at that and they go, oh, maybe it was just the game was a little too fast for him this year. It's slowed down. He's making the right reads, and he's making professional throws. Because I don't think anybody's going to deny that Zach Calzada has an NFL arm. It's just the NFL accuracy. It's the NFL speed. It's the NFL uh, touch, poise, all that little jazz. Those are areas where he definitely needs to work on some things. This episode of Lockdown Aggies is brought to you by a holiday tradition, and that would be getting an Omaha steak. The holidays are right around the corner, and what better gift to get somebody than just a nice, delectable, delicious meal that way you don't have to really worry about getting them something else. Go visit omahasteaks.com and type in college for info on search and order and get the perfect gift package. It's only $99.99. There are 24 entrees, including the world-famous bacon-wrapped filet mignons, chicken breasts, sides, desserts, and much, much more. Plus, when you use the promo code COLLEGE, you'll get an extra eight Omaha Steak burgers for free. That's four bacon-wrapped filet mignons, four boneless chicken breasts, four jumbo steaks, four gourmet jumbo franks, four individual scallop potatoes, four ounces of, of uh, camel apple tartlets, four ounces of signature seasoning, and of course those four, those eight, eight ounces Omaha steak burger. Stop sitting on the sidelines. Go ahead and get yourself a delectable treat that everyone in your family will love. Go ahead and get something that everyone will enjoy, and more importantly, that you'll actually see them use your money for. 
and it's a really good gift. I know that I'm getting my family this this upcoming year. You should too. Go visit omahasteaks.com and make sure you go ahead and use the promo code locked on to get the absolute delectable perfect gift care package. Locked on Aggies presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day. Now make sure your second listen is Locked on Bets with your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. Get daily picks, wagers, odds, and much, much more when you visit Locked on Bets, LockedOnPodcast.com. So what does Texas A&M do now for the upcoming bowl game against number 17, Wake Forest? There's a multitude of reasons. Now let's go ahead and start with the first one. Haynes King. Um... I could believe Haynes could play. I do. Maybe part of the reason why Calzada left was because of the fact that King was going to be able to play in the bowl game. That'd be that'd be huge. You know, the biggest thing of all that I would love to see is for him to come back, start the year off really hot, close the year off on a right note against a Power 5 team. Great. There you go. Jimbo Fisher, though, said, I don't believe that's going to happen. I just don't want to rush him back. I don't want him to be injured when it comes time for spring ball. I want to be able to get him fully up to speed. So that way we know what we're working with when it's time to, you know, get ready for next season. So in the bowl game, which you are seeing opt-outs, you are seeing players leave. Leon O'Neal's not playing. DeMar Leal's not playing. Jaden Peavy's not playing. Zach Calzada's not playing. Maybe they do go with another option. Now, the only other option that we've seen live this year and I put that into context because there is one more option. Well, really two, I'll throw in the, the, the fun one. But the other option would be, and this is a big kicker, but, you know, it just would happen. It would be to go ahead and play Blake Boast. Now, Boast is a walk-on freshman who, you know, had his opportunity. He played two games, once against South Carolina, uh, once against Prairie View A&M, he threw two completions for a gain of 18 total yards and had set, yeah, 18 total yards and threw an interception. Uh, I definitely think that that's you know an option if you're going to go the conventional quarterback way. But again, walk on freshman. Billy Lucci of Texas went on yesterday and said, uh, I would not expect to have a walk on freshman start. So in my opinion, that either means, okay, so he's going to be added to the scholarship. He earned himself a scholarship at Texas A&M or they may go this direction, which would be really fun. And that would be see what you got with Eli Stowers. Now, Eli Stowers was a four-star commit. He was a super, like, he was a very talented quarterback from a Denton Geyer High School last year. Very mobile, very tall, very lanky. And Texas A&M, because of the quarterback situation that they had going on at the time, decided to play him at tight end this year. They said, you know what? He would be better suited as an athlete rather than a quarterback. So why don't we go ahead and play him at tight end utilize him to what we believe, quote-unquote, are his strengths, and then at that point, we can reevaluate later. So, in my opinion, that's the next option that you can go with. Okay, it works. It's not the best option I've heard of, but it at least works. There's an option there. There's something to at least go with on the premises there. you never seen him throw a football before, but he is mobile. He does have good legs. He apparently has great vision, and when you watch this high school film, he did have a good arm. He did have a very good arm, and he did look the part of a Division One quarterback. So, I would be very interested to see that. The final option, and no, I'm not going to go Nick Starkle. Listen, I think it'd be great to see Nick Starkle have an opportunity to come back in and beat the likes of Wake Forest. He even tweeted today, I want to beat Wake Forest. Let me come back. Let him have one more gear of eligibility. Like, let him have one more game of eligibility at, what is he now, 24 years old? I think it's funny also because of he, um, he's like the oldest quarterback. Like, the last, Kellen and him were freshmen, freshmen or, yeah, freshmen when they both played in 20. 17 and then he was able to transfer twice and he saw another year of eligibility because of the COVID-19 year so he's got one more game because they finished five and seven so he's not bowl eligible with San Jose State uh but it would be really fun for me to be able to see what he can do and came back in but the actual real option is run the wildcat and running the wildcat would be an awesome thing to do Anaya Smith played a little bit of quarterback in high school uh Devon A-Chain played a little bit of quarterback in high school just line both of them up back there, see what happens, have some fun with it. Like, go ahead, throw some trick plays in there. I would very much enjoy that. I think that'd be a really fun concept. And overall, I, I think that a lot of people would actually find that more entertaining than watching a three and out, three and out, three and out, and bet you're in defense of making critical stops against one of the highest passing offenses in the country. I mean, like, that to me at least gives you a chance to finish the game out pretty significantly strong, in my opinion. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Aggies. Make sure you're following us on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson and at Locked on Aggies. I'll be back tomorrow to give you my final predictions of what I think will happen 
on early signing period, who are players that we know are going to commit to Texas A&M, which way I think that some of the players on the fence are going to go, that and much, much more. See you tomorrow, and remember, get me all.